If you're dreaming of becoming a governance, risk, and compliance professional, but you're starting with zero knowledge, this video is for you. Today, I'm gonna to share a step-by-step -step roadmap to help you go from beginner to expert in the GRC field. Grab a notebook and let's dive in. First, let's define what GRC stands for. It stands for governance, risk, and compliance. These are the core principles that help organizations manage their operations ethically, efficiently, and within the law. If you're completely new, don't worry about it. You don't need a fancy degree or a background in IT to start out. In fact, people working in GRC come from all kinds of different backgrounds, including those that have nothing to do with technology. Let's take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor. Whether you're a startup founder, navigating your first audit, or a seasoned security professional, scaling your GRC program, showing your commitment to security, and building trust has never been more critical or more complex. That's where Vanta can help you out. As an experienced professional, I know that starting or scaling a security program can be challenging to implement and maintain over time, but it's significantly easier with all Vanta's capabilities. Vanta can automate your compliance needs across over 35 frameworks like SOC 2 and ISO 27001, centralized security workflows, complete questionnaires up to five times faster, and proactively manage vendor risk. I also love the ability to create custom controls and frequencies that are tailored to your environment. If you aren't sure how to be compliant, use Vanta's network of auditors and experts to make sure that you do things right the first time. Join over 9,000 global companies like Atlassian, Quora, and Factory who are using Vanta to manage risk, prove security in real time, and build trust. For being a part of my audience, Vanta is going to give you $1,000 off by going to vanta.com slash john. Again, that's vanta.com slash john for $1,000 off. Thanks to Vanta for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to the content. Again, the three pillars of GRC are governance, risk, and compliance. Governance involves decision-making and accountability structures. This is like the oversight of an organization. Risk means to identify and mitigate threats to an organization. This can come in many forms, including technical risks like viruses or non-technical risks like espionage. Compliance means to adhere to laws, regulations, and policies. These can vary based on the country, the industry, and other factors. Think of GRC as the backbone of an organization's trustworthiness. The more effective GRC program is, the better perception will be on how you protect the organization. Now, here's how you can build your expertise from scratch. Phase one is all about learning the basics. Start with learning the language of GRC. You need to become familiar with key terms like risk assessment, controls, audits, and compliance frameworks. Like many things, the more that you get exposed to the information, the better off you're gonna be. Free resources like YouTube tutorials, blogs, and LinkedIn posts are great starting points. I also recommend using websites like darkreading.com and cyberthreatintel.com to keep you up to date on what's going on. Something else that you can do is take free or cheap courses. You can use platforms like TryHackMe, Cybertrainingpro.com, Udemy, and Cyberary. These all offer introductory courses on cybersecurity, compliance, and risk management. You don't have to worry about spending a fortune yet, but start learning immediately. So when we're talking about a security and compliance program, there's two main standards that are most frequently used. We have the NIST RMF or Risk Management Framework. And if you're in the United States and you deal a lot with the United States government, this is the standard that you're gonna to have to know. We also have ISO 27001, and that's more for an international standard. So basically, if you're any other company, you're probably going to use this standard. Now they focus on a lot of the similar things, but they are different in how they're actually applied and the control requirements and things like that. And I'll show you the website here in a second so we can talk a little bit more about that. Then we have some more specific standards and frameworks based on the types of data or the things that you're doing. So we have PCI DSS. Now this is if you're going to deal with credit card transactions or take payments and things like that. We have HIPAA, if you're in the United States and you're dealing with healthcare information, this is going to apply to you. So a hospital or any kind of health services type of organization. If your company is doing business in Europe or you live in Europe, you're gonna to wanna to know about GDPR. It deals with data privacy. And then again, if you're in Europe and you're dealing with financial entities or institutions, banks, things like that, you're gonna to wanna to know about DORA, which is a brand new regulation. Now there's all kinds of other regulations out there. This is not everything that exists, but these are really important ones that you're gonna to wanna to know if they apply to you. And remember, the first two, when we're talking about NIST RMF or ISO 27001, those are going to apply to basically every organization, 
one of those will be present. The others might vary depending on the types of data and the business that you're in. All right, so I'll leave the links to these different standards and frameworks in the description, but I just wanna show you the websites so that you can see them and find out how to actually get the standards. So this is the NIST Risk Management Framework, RMF, and the nice thing with this is that it's free. It's a free standard. You can just go and download it and start reviewing it and understanding and learning the actual standard. If we go down here in the website, you'll see that it's broken down into different steps and everything like that, but you can just download this standard. Again, there's a whole bunch of different NIST standards that can help you in your security and compliance program, but the idea of this is that it is a repeatable process for systems that are dealing with defense or government-related things in the United States. Now, this is the website for ISO 27001. There's a whole bunch of different standards out there from ISO. It's not just cybersecurity and privacy standards, so keep that in mind. But one thing that's unfortunate, especially as you're first starting out in your career, is that ISO does charge for the standards. Unlike NIST, where you can just go download the standard and start reading through it, it's not like that with ISO. So this particular one, 27,001, is 132 francs, which ends up being about 145 US dollars. So you can see, as you start learning a bunch of these standards or wanting to access a bunch of them, it will start to rack up some cost as far as paying for the standards. Now you will get access to the standards, a PDF for it, so you can just review that and keep reading through it, but it's not inexpensive to learn ISO. The other thing with ISO is that the standards change. So for instance, this is the 2022 controls, that's the most recent standard. If this changes and say it goes to 2027 or something like that, and there's new controls, you'll have to rebuy the standard and get the updated controls. So the previous one to this was 2013. So if you had 2013, then you would have to go buy 2022 and you don't get a discount on it, you just have to rebuy it. So that is a challenge, not only from just getting the standard, but also maintaining it in your organization because you're gonna have to access and obtain the actual current copy of the standard. This is the website for PCI. If you go to their website here and you click on standards, you can see PCI DSS right here, and if we click that, this will give us more information about PCI DSS. We can go to the documents library here, and if you scroll down, you'll be able to download the standard. This is another one that you can just download and start reading through, so I highly recommend that. You will have to actually fill in this privacy requirement or this privacy statement in order to get access to it, but this is a good one to know. As we talked about, HIPAA is really important in the United States if you're dealing with healthcare information. So you can go to the government website. There's a whole bunch of information about HIPAA. This is a fairly easy one to kind of understand, especially if you've already grasped the other standards and frameworks. This one won't be that challenging for you, but it's a good one to know if you're dealing with that kind of information. This is the website for GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation. Remember, this is for Europe. So if you're doing business in Europe, you live in Europe, whatever the case is, you're gonna wanna know this standard. So you can go to the website, you can go through the different chapters, and you can see all the information that relates to that. And you basically just read through this and understand the framework or the standard. It's like that with a lot of these standards, you're just gonna have to read through it. There's no shortcut to it, but you just have to do it. And finally, DORA, the Digital Operational Resilience Act. Again, this is in Europe as well. Very similar to GDPR. You're gonna to have to just go through these articles and actually read through it. That's one thing about GRC that's different than some other areas. You just have to read the standard. You can't just grab a technology and start playing around with it and change settings and kind of figure it out. You just have to read the standard. And for some people, that is not as enjoyable as they thought GRC would be, but there is a lot of reading that goes along with that career field. The better that you understand these frameworks and standards, the better that you'll do in this career field. It is one of the most important things that you can do in the GRC career field is understanding the frameworks. There's people that work in the GRC career field that don't know the frameworks, or they assume that they know them a lot better than they do, but that's really your level of expertise, how well you know these standards and frameworks. And again, I'll leave links to all these in the description. If you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to leave a like so that YouTube knows this content is helpful for other people. 
Also, make sure to check out the description for more resources related to this video. All right, let's get back to the content. You should be dedicating at least one to two hours per week to learning these concepts. You don't need to rush, but the goal is to build a solid foundation. Now, I highly recommend checking out my video called Free Cybersecurity Training to Become a GRC Analyst on YouTube for specific training courses. Phase two is all about applying what you've learned. Start by looking for volunteer or internship opportunities to assist in compliance related tasks at nonprofits, startups, or small businesses. Offer to help with simple tasks like documenting policies or organizing training sessions. Churches are very popular for this because they can't hire all the people that they need. Next, start familiarizing yourself with free or trial versions of popular GRC tools. Explore their functionalities through online tutorials. This is all important because experience matters. Even small projects or internships can give you stories to tell during interviews. Now that you've got some experience, it's time to boost your credibility. Entry-level certifications can be a great way to improve your knowledge and have something to show employers. Start with certifications like CompTIA Security Plus or an ISO 27001 Foundation certification. Certifications aren't the only thing that make you a qualified or competitive candidate, but they aren't something that you can ignore, especially at the entry level. Next, you want to network like a pro. Join LinkedIn groups, attend webinars, and participate in forums. Building connections with professionals can open doors to mentorship and job opportunities. Investing in certifications and networking is going to set you apart from other candidates. You've made it to phase four, mastery. Once you've done the previous phases, it's all about continuing to evolve. Specializing in a particular area is a great long-term strategy for more opportunities and the highest compensation benefits. Choose a niche like IT risk, privacy, or audit and go deep. This makes you highly valuable to organizations. Make sure that you're staying current with trends that are happening in the industry. Follow industry trends, read reports, and continue attending advanced training. Cybersecurity and compliance are always changing, so you need to stay on the cutting edge. Teaching and mentoring are also excellent ways to build your professional profile, reinforce your knowledge, and contribute to the career field. Share your knowledge with others through blogs, videos, or other ways that you can find. Question of the day, what interests you the most about working in GRC? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walk through how to go from zero to expert in GRC. Remember, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Consistency and curiosity are your best friends on this journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more GRC tips and strategies. Till next time, stay compliant, stay confident, and keep rocking your GRC career.